Hi, I'm Shinlin Blanswala, and this presentation is the continuation of the subtopics of precipitation based on Case of Ramayas Engineering Hydrology Book 3rd Edition. Today, we will tackle the last three subtopics which are the frequency of point rainfall, the maximum intensity duration frequency relationship, and the probable maximum precipitation or PMP. As future engineers, it is our concern to also study about rainfall since it might affect future works. So para malaman ang information about this, we analyze the frequency of point rainfall data and ang pinaka-common ang pinagamit na data is the series of rainfall data in a year arranged chronologically. In computing for the return period or recurrence interval or the muling pagbabalik in Filipino, we use T is equals to 1 over P, where T is the return period and P is the probability of an event equal or greater than a specified magnitude. For example, the return period of rainfall of 20 cm in 24 hour is 10 years at a certain station A. Sinasabi lang dito na ang average rainfall magnitude equal or greater than 20 cm in 24 hour ay nagaganap lamang isang beses sa 10 taon. So kung sa 100 years, 10 such events can be expected. But since wala namang sinabing in 100 years kung ilan ang expected, Parang ang i-compute natin is the probability of this event to happen in any one year at station A. So since T is equals to 1 over P, thus P is equals to 1 over T, P is equals to 1 over 10, so the probability is 0.1 or 10%. If P is the probability of an event occurring, then ang opposite naman ito which is the probability of an event not occurring in a given year is denoted as Q, which is equal to 1 minus p. As for the probability of occurrence of an event, r times in n successive years, we use prn is equals to n factorial over the difference of n minus r factorial times r factorial answer times p raised to r times q raised to n minus r. You can also use the other one, whichever is simple to you, where prn is the probability of a random hydrologic event or rainfall of given magnitude and exceedance probability p occurring at r times in n successive years. For example, letter A. The probability of an event of exceedance probability p occurring two times in n successive years is, since r is equals to 2 and n is equals to n, p to n is equals to n factorial over the difference of n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial answer times p raised to 2 times q raised to n minus 2. Letter B. The probability of an event not occurring at all in n successive years is, since r is equals to 0 and n is equals to n, p0n is equals to q raised to n, or simply, the difference of 1 minus p raised to n. And C. The probability of the event occurring at least once in n successive years, since r is equals to 1 is and n is equals to n, p1 is equals to 1 minus q raised to n. Or 1 is 1 minus the difference of 1 minus p raised to n. Example, the analysis of data on maximum one-day rainfall depth at Madras indicated that a depth of 280 mm had a return period of 50 years. Determine the probability of a one-day rainfall depth equal to or greater than 280 mm at Madras, occurring once in 20 successive years, two times in 15 successive years, and at least once in 20 successive years. The answer for the probability of a one-day rainfall depth equal to or greater than 280 mm at Madras occurring once in 20 successive years is 0.272 or 27.2%. For 2 times in 15 successive years naman is 0.323 or 32.3%. And for at least once in 20 successive years, hindi po sila pareho ng solution sa number sa letter A. Kasi dito may binanggit na at least once. So ang minimum is 1 but it can go for 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, uh, the answer here is 0.332 or 33.2%. Part of the subtopic, frequency of point rainfall, is plotting position. 
Plotting position is the exceedance probability of an event obtained by the use of an empirical formula. Since the purpose of frequency analysis of an annual series is to obtain a relationship between the magnitude of the event and its probability of exceedance, the probability analysis may be made either by empirical or by analytical methods. Sa simple empirical technique, inaayos lang given annual extreme series in a descending order of a magnitude and assign an order number m. So, ang first entry is m is equals to 1, next is m is equals to 2, and so on, hanggang sa last event for which m is equals to n, or number of years of record. Here, the probability p of an event equaled or exceeded is given by Weibull formula, which is p is equals to m over n plus 1. The recurrence interval t is equals to 1 over p is also calculated by t is equals to n plus 1 all over m. Here are other empirical formula to calculate p. Note that p is equals to m over n plus 1 or the Weibull formula is the most popular plotting position formula. Here's a graph showing the return periods of annual rainfall at station A. Having calculated p and hence t for all events in the series, the rainfall magnitude is plotted against the corresponding t. And from the graph, we can estimate the magnitude of specific duration for any recur recurrence interval. Note that for accurate work, Gumbel's extreme value distribution and log Pearson's type 3 method, the two most commonly used analytical methods are used. If p is the probability of exceedance of a, of a variable having a magnitude m, a common practice is to, see, is to designate the magnitude m as having 100% dependability. For example, 75% dependable annual rainfall at a station means the value of annual rainfall at the station can be expected to be equaled to or exceeded 75% times. An example, on an average 30 times out of 40 or out of 40 years. Thus, 75% dependable annual rainfall means the value of rainfall in the annual time series that has set p is equals to 0.75, t is equals to 1 over p, then the return period is equals to 1.333 years. Let's take for example this problem. The record of annual rainfall at Station A covering a period of 22 years is given be below. A. Estimate the annual rainfall with, re with return periods of 10 years and 50 years. B. What would be the probability of an annual rainfall of magnitude equal, or equal to or exceeding 100 cm occurring at Station A? Letter C. What is the 75% dependable annual rainfall at station A? To solve the problem, you'll have to arrange the data in descending order and rank them. Next is calculate probability by Weibull formula. Then find the t or the return period. As you can see in the table, 13 has no return period. It is because 13 and 14 have the same Magnitude. When two or more events have the same magnitude, the probability p is calculated in the greatest m value. So, ang ginamit is the 14. And then, you'll have to graph it. And for letter A, t is equals to 10 years. By interpolation of two successive years, the answer is 137.9 cm. And for t is equals to 50 years, by extrapolation of the best fit, the answer is 180 cm. For b naman, by interpolation, the return period of annual rainfall of magnitude equal to or exceeding 10, 100 cm is 2.4 years. And the exceedance probability, p is equals to 1 over 2.4 is equals to 0 0.417. And for C, 
annual rainfall with P is equals to 75%, T is equals to 1.333 years by interpolation between two successive stations, A is 82.3. You may access my solution in the handout. Next topic is maximum intensity duration frequency relationship. It's a three-part topic, so let's start with maximum intensity duration relationship. In storm, the actual intensity is not measured in general kasi hindi naman siya maintained. It's, it varies over the course of time. According to the book, it is reflected by the slope of the mass curve of rainfall varies over the wide range during the course of the rainfall. If the mass curve is considered divided into n segments of time interval, delta t, such that the total duration of the storm d is equal to n delta t, then the intensity of the storm for various subdurations tj is equal to 1 delta t, 2 delta t, 3 delta t, j delta t, and n delta t could be calculated. It will be found that for each duration, say tj, the intensity will have a maximum intensity value and this could be analyzed to obtain a relationship for the variation of the maximum intensity with duration for the storm. This process is basic to the development of maximum intensity duration frequency relationship for the station discussed later on. Here is a procedure for analysis of the mass curve of rainfall for developing maximum intensity duration relationship of the storm. This will be discussed later on. Another is the maximum depth duration relationship. Instead of maximum intensity, IM, in the duration T, the product IM times T is equal to DM, which is the maximum depth of precipitation in the duration T that could be used to relate it to the duration. This is known the maximum depth duration relationship of the storm. Note that the procedure of developing this relationship is same as the maximum depth duration relationship. Moving on to maximum intensity duration frequency relationship. Kung available ang rainfall data sa self-recording rain gauge sa mahabang panahon, it is easy to determine the frequency of occurrence of maximum intensity occurring on a specified duration. The procedure for calculating the intensity duration frequency relationship is as follows. Here is a figure showing maximum intensity return period duration curves. Analytically, these relationships are commonly expressed in a condensed form by general form I is equals to kt raised to x over the sum of d plus a raised to n, where I is the maximum intensity, t is the return period, d is the duration, and kx, a and n, are the coefficients for the area represented by the station. Here's a figure of maximum intensity duration frequency curves. Sometimes, instead of maximum intensity, maximum depth is used as a parameter and the result are represented as a plot of maximum depth versus duration with return period as the third variable. Here's a figure showing maximum depth duration frequency curves. Here are some typical values of coefficients for a few places in India, by Rambabo and others, 1979.
To further understand, let's take this example. The mass curve of rainfall in a storm of total duration 270 minutes is given below. Letter A. Draw the hierograph of the storm at 30 minutes time step. Letter B. Plot the maximum intensity duration curve for the storm. And letter C. Plot the maximum depth duration curve for the storm. For letter A, here's the hierograph of the storm. We use the simple formula for intensity. I is equals to the change in P over the change in T times 1 over 60 since it should be in Rs. To answer letter B, we started with a table. This table 2.7a shows the maximum intensity duration relationship. Note that the incremental depth of rainfall is solved by subtracting the successive cumulated rainfall depending on the time duration. Like for example, for the first 30 minutes, 6 minus 0 is 6, 18 minus 6 is 12, 21 minus 18 is 3, and so on. For the 60 minutes naman, 18 minus 0 is 18, 21 minus 6 is 15, and so on and so forth. In Table 2.7b shows maximum intensity maximum depth duration relationship. And here's the graph that shows the maximum intensity duration and maximum depth duration curve for the storm of example. Let's come now to the last topic which is the probable maximum precipitation or the PMP. In the design of major hydraulic structures such as spillways, dams, hydrologists and hydraulic engineers would minimize the failure possibility to the extent of probably virtually zero. Natural kasi it can ruin or damage lives, property, economy, and national morale. So to design and analyze such structure, pinag-aaralan ang maximum possible precipitation that can be expected in that area. This stems from the recognition that there is a physical upper limit of the amount of precipitation that can fall over a specified area in a given time. The PMP is defined as the greatest or extreme rainfall for a given duration that, that is physically possible over the station or basin. Also, PMP can be defined as the rainfall over a basin which would produce a flood flow with virtually no risk of being exceeded. The development of PMP for a given region is an involved procedure and requires the knowledge of an experienced hydrometeorologist. Basically, two approaches are used. First is the meteorological methods, and the second is the sp statistical study of rainfall data. Statistical studies indicated that PMP can be estimated as PMP is equals to mean of annual maximum rainfall series plus a frequency which depends upon the statistical distribution of the series, number of years of record and return period times standard deviation of the series or this one that's all thank you